Hi, my name is Paul Anderson. I work for Airbus in the UK, where we design and build all of the Airbus wings on every Airbus aircraft that's flying today. We are trying to encourage young people and to show young people that careers in engineering, studying physics, mathematics and science are not necessarily boring backroom jobs. It's a fantastic opportunity to work for a company like Airbus, undertake projects like this and to develop, develop yourself holistically both at work and out of work. The bike that we're building essentially, Airbus has been sponsoring me for the last five years in my drag racing efforts and we're now focusing our attention on land speed racing. This is an uh, American dominated sport and what we've noticed is the American approach is to take a brick, apply huge power to that brick and to see how fast they can drive it. We are motorcycle and aeroplane enthusiasts. We believe that a beautiful aerodynamic package and just enough power to reach our target speed is the way forward. But the main way that we have of um, expanding the power capabilities and the potential of this engine is through this intercooler setup. This unit pressurizes the air entering the engine and forces the fuel into the engine, making it breathe a lot more strongly than it would in its standard condition. And that unit backed up by the uh, intercooler and the inlets that we've developed at Airbus. We're running this machine now at much more than double its original power. It's now running at 275 horsepower, which is a very, very powerful engine for, for a motorcycle. Our eventual target is 400 horsepower. And we believe with the sophisticated aerodynamic package that we're developing for this bike, we will make a very realistic attempt on the World Land Speed record in five years' time. Based on the aerodynamic and engineering learning from that project, we intend to drop the engine and many of the components into a streamliner design. This is a fully enclosed vehicle, which is essentially a fighter jet without wings. When successful with that, which we will be, the following year we will take our streamliner liner, proudly bearing the Airbus name out to the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, and we intend to show the Americans what Europe can do and what aerodynamics means. This is a big thing. The Americans will not like this. They will challenge us back. There's a slight difference in the way that we land speed race in Europe and they do it in America. And that, that difference is that we don't have a 10 mile long salt flat anywhere in Europe. We're rather smaller and our countries are a bit more limited. So the record in Europe that is the, the top record to have and the, the important record is known as the flying kilometer. For this record, you have a 750 meter acceleration sprint a measured kilometre over which your average speed is taken and then 750 metres exactly to stop the machine. Within one hour, with no repairs, only safety, safety related checks, you have to turn around and come back the other way. They then take the average speed of your two measured kilometres. But the challenge here, the engineering challenge, isn't actually the top speed, although it is a challenge in itself. The true challenge for us as engineers is after a, from a standing start, after only 750 meters of motion, we have to be doing a speed in excess of 200 miles an hour. When we achieve that speed, we then have to have enough revolutions left in our engine to open the throttle and accelerate from in excess of 200 across the flying kilometer. The biggest challenge of all is we have to do it twice within an hour. Most competitors do not make the return run. In order to do this, the performance requirements of the engine are, in normal terms, when we look at our motor cars, we look at a 0 to 60 mile an hour acceleration time. For this machine, 0 to 100 miles an hour must be achieved in around two seconds. A considerable g-force and a very, very high acceleration requirement. And this is the major challenge. Most engines will either address low end power and torque and give massive acceleration, or they will be very, very fast at the top end. The engineering challenge here is to produce an engine that, which will not only deliver low down horsepower and torque, but will have the capability to, to rev right through the rev range and maintain that power level right up into the high end of the, of the torque. I've been drag racing motorcycles since I was 18 years old. Um, the real challenge is maintaining focus and attention when the adrenaline is pumping through your veins and you're moving very fast in a very short period of time. There's no room for mistakes. I'm very, very used to hard acceleration. What I'm not very good at is going around corners, but thankfully this bike will never ever have to go around a corner. The beauty of this is that this sport is not about the rider. 
This sport is about the engineering excellence of the team and it's about the machine itself. In reality, we could put a monkey on this bike. It doesn't have to be me. All you need is somebody who can hang on and open the throttle and apply the brakes. The real challenge and the credit for this does not go to me, it goes to the Airbus team who supported me in developing the equipment that is capable of doing the task.